in the last session we have seen how to design a synchronous counter avoiding lockout condition in today's session we will see about presetable counter so what do you mean by presetable counter if you see if you could see now the synchronous counters which are available in today they are going to have the ics with presetable concept integrated into it that means so the counter can operate it it is a counter can count from any sequence it is not from 0 to 15 it can count from 6 to 19 also any sequence which is required as per the application using both asynchronous type asynchronous type means no need to worry about your clock signal or you can use your synchronous type checking your with checking with your clock signal so that that type of presetting is available so such counters are called as presetable counters wherein you can use your asynchronous output to override your clock inputs and for counting you can use your synchronous procedure both asynchronous and synchronous procedure for presetting can be incorporated so before going into the configuration certain concepts we will know you have a co concept called as asynchronous input when i say is a asynchronous input or direct input so whenever you are going to consider the circuit configuration you are going to have many flip flops when i have many flip flops whenever I am going to do any operation initially it should be reset okay I cannot go and check each and every flip flop what is the previous condition in that case this asynchronous input comes into picture if I am going to set a high on the preset signal then it sets the flip flop so if I if I am going to keep the high on the clear signal then it is going to clear the flip flop okay so such inputs if it is going to if I am going to keep high on the preset, if it is going to set the flip flop, high on clear signals means it is going to clear the flip flop. So, this condition is called as your asynchronous input condition or your direct input condition. Okay. So, this concept we are going to use it here. So, first you draw a 3 bit counter. How will you draw a synchronous counter? So, I have J0, K0, Q0, J1, K1, Q1, J2, K2, Q2, draw the outline. How will you draw a synchronous 3 bit counter? First one I will keep high. First of all, you give the clock pulses here. They have given a negative edge triggered clock pulses to all. Now, this Q0 will be the input for the first flip flop. Whenever I am going to take the input for the second flip flop, how I will take? From the Q0 input and Q1 input, I will put an AND gate and give it to the next flip flop. So, first draw the 3 bit synchronous counter. After that, you can incorporate this presetable concept here okay now what what you are going to do this this presetable concept it is going to include the parallel load capacity how you are going to use it in your asynchronous and synchronous mode okay now we will see the circuit configuration what you have done here on the top we have given three preset signals and here we have given three clear signals now you know on both the sides what you have given you have given a and gates now what is what you have done at the top for the first NAND gate all the first inputs you are given P0, P1, P2 that is suppose if I want to count the numbers from 6 to 19 or from 5 to 19 whatever is that. So those data which has to be entered is given as P, P0, P1 and P2 okay. Now what you have done now the second input what I am doing I am taking all the second input which is shown by the blue color line and I have connected to the parallel load capacity line. Okay, this which has been given through a NOT gate. Now, what is the other conditions which is left out? If you are going to see the two inputs of this uh, clear NAND gate, if you are going to see the first input comes from the data through a NOT gate. So, give all the things through a NOT gate. Done with? Now, what you are going to do is from the same output, from your parallel output, you are going to connect it here. You have connected to the upper NAND gate also as well as the lower NAND gate also. Okay, now we will just consider the first condition. Once the circuit configuration is over, whenever we are going to keep your parallel load condition as 0, whenever I am going to keep this as 0, this becomes 1. When this becomes 1, what happens? All these point becomes 1. Then what does it indicate? So whenever I am going to keep my PL signal as slow, when one input of the AND gate is 1 and depending upon the inputs which is received it is the data are going to entered as it is 
whenever I am going to keep my PL as slow. Okay, whenever I am going to PL as slow, I am not going to consider the clock operation. It is going to work asynchronously. It is going to override the J, K and your clock impulse. So, when my PL is slow, the clock is going to be disabled and the asynchronous input whatever it is going to get activated and it is going to enter here on one side. On the other side, what you are going to do? So, this one I have taken for example, the data is 101. How will be the data? It will be entered as 0, 1, 0 because I am passing it to a NOT gate. The other input is going to be 1. So, since this is 0, this is 1. So, this 1 will pass here. Now, what does it indicate? So, this is the two datas which is going to pass through here. Now, what happens? Suppose if I am just going to consider here, if I am going to consider these two or two uh, NOT gates. In that case, whenever I am going to give 1, 1, what happens? It is going to clear the gate because what is the operation? It is 1, 0, 1. Okay. In these two places, 1 should be there. In this place, 0 should be entered. So, when I am gave, both the inputs are going to be 1, it is going to clear my flip flop. So, what is the condition? What is the concept that is arrived with? So, whenever my PL is 0, my datas are going to get entered and whatever is the, whenever it is going to pass through or not get, the datas are going to get complemented and the other input is going to be 1. In that case, whichever place is 0, it is going to get cleared. So, in other words, when PL is low, the clock is going to be disabled. There is no function of the clock and all. So, clock is going to be disabled and the asynchronous input is activated. So, this asynchronous input, whatever the data that has to be count from, say it is to be count from, let us take it as to be count from 5, that data is entered inside. Okay. Now, let us consider the condition, other condition. Suppose, if my parallel load condition is 1, that is my PL is high. In that case, this will become 0. If this becomes 0, what happens? Here all the places, it will become 0. In that case, the parallel data which is entering, it will not have any effect because 0 into anything, you just cancel this NOT gate and check AND gate. In that case, it will not have any effect at all. Okay, that means these three gates are disabled. So, parallel data will not have any effect. So far, what is the concept done? When the when the PL is slow, the, the clock is disabled. As a result, the data alone is entered. It has not been counted. Okay, during the asynchronous mode, the data is entered, but during the synchronous mode, it is going to get counted. Okay, it is not exactly. It should start from zero. If I want, I could start from six or five or seven, as per my application. There, where this presetable counter is useful. I can design a presetable counter which has to count from 6, okay, just by incorporating the logic as per our application required. Now, if you could see, now whenever this PL is going to be high, this is 1, this is 0. So, it is going to disable all the gates, okay. So, the data is not going to get entered. What happens? Now, the data entered should do the counting operation as per our application. Now, here we will come down. Now, what happens? 1, 0. So, in all the places it will be 0. Then what does it infer? So, whatever is my data, okay. So, whatever the data it was 1, now it would have been changed to this data was 1, 1 it should be changed to 0, here 1, 0 and here 0, 0, okay. So, whenever I am going to have a high on the clear, it will clear the signal. Now, what is the concept here? Whenever the data has arrived here, so now what will be the data here? So, here this is going to be 0 and this is going to be 0 and now you are going to give a signal that it will start counting, okay. So, whenever my PL is going to be high in that case, so the parallel data is not going to have any input, the flip flop will respond to the counting operation. So, it will start counting from here because this is going to be the data has already entered here. So, this just gives a signal as a result it starts counting from 101. So, which is going to be a desired case. Okay. So, with this I conclude. Thank you students. In the next class we will be seeing about a counter application. Thank you.